Sean here. We are with the lead singer of the Cherry Thing. My name is Josh Scoggin. Now, the Chariot was formed back in 2004 when you left Mama Jean. True. Um, did you ever expect to be such a popular underground band? Are we? Um, uh, no, I don't know. You know, we just uh, we just play music and hope for the best. Um, I, 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 I didn't expect to be doing it still at this moment in my life, so that rules. Um, popularity or not, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's up and down, I guess. But for us, I mean, just to be here and still playing, that's awesome. That rules. Now, your guys' stage performance has been labeled as crazy, insane, just playing out that would melt your face and leave you wanting more. How does that make you guys feel? What made you guys, you know, decide to perform on stage in such crazy ways? Um, it wasn't like a conscious decision. It wasn't like, you know, it's not like we had a band meeting. It was like, oh, we need to go crazy. It's just music we write, you know, it just kind of pushes you to do so. And, um, I think we just write, you know, when, when I was dreaming about being in a band as a kid, I always dreamed about the live show. You know, I love recording, I love writing music, but I think we just do that so we can play more shows. Um, but yeah, so for, for us, you know, it wasn't, it's nothing we ever talked about, you know, it's just kind of, I think it kind of comes with the territory, you know, um, and we just write music that pushes us or, you know, motivates us or whatever, and, uh, and so that, I guess it's just a natural byproduct of, of what we do. And, and it, it's funny because we don't really know anything else, you know? Like, we, it's only it's either on or it's off. There's no, like, in between, you know? And so, like, when you've had, like, a bad day or you're feeling kind of sick or whatever, you know, it's, it's funny because all, all that goes away when, you know, when you hear those, like, four clicks of the first song, you know? It's, re it's really therapeutic, and yeah, it's really a pleasure to be able to be a part of this for sure. Now, when you left Norma Jean, uh, was there any hostility between you guys, and why did you decide to leave Norma Jean? Oh, no, definitely no. Uh, I, I love all those dudes to death. We, we, uh, we've remained friends the whole time. They, they actually, uh, like, our first show was with them. Um, we did a couple tours with them. Um, super, super cool dudes. Um, yeah, we the, just interviewed them. Uh, not, not cool. Them. Did they concur? Were they, were they exact opposite? <laughs> oh, no. Josh sucks, man. No. No, yeah, we're all super close. Um, uh, you know, I grew up with most of those dudes, so it's, you know, it'd be a tragedy to, to not have that friendship still. So, um, yeah, it was very peaceful. Uh, I left, uh, it, you know, it's, it's kind of a loaded question, um, but, you know, it, the short version, I just, it, was, it wasn't anything to do with the band. Uh, it was just kind of me in my own head and my own brain and my own path and making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, and, and you know things are getting big quick, you know, and so we just have to sort of make sure that you know, like, you know, as an artist, you, you want to make sure you're doing your motivation is is art, you know, and, and nothing else, you know, and so I, I took about six months or a year off and just kind of wrapped my head around that scenario. Now, when the uh, chariot was born, you guys were pretty much signed right away to Solid State Records, which is a uh, metal uh, division of Tooth and Nail. That's a pretty big accosh uh, you know, accomplishment, especially for starting out. How did that make you guys feel? Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, I had a uh, I had a good relationship with all those dudes from Norma Jean and stuff, and uh, you know, it was really just a matter of like, you know, I kept in touch with them the whole time, you know, so. It really wasn't that difficult of a, of a, of a, of a task, really, but uh, but it is awesome. I mean, it's good to have that sort of jump start to already be signed, you know, and stuff. So, really, really good thing. Now, with your guys intense killer performance that you guys put on, uh, what's your favorite song to play live? <laughs> we get asked that a lot, and it's kind of tricky because there's like a favorite song when the people there know who we are, and then there's a favorite song when the people there don't know who we are. Um, we're on tour with Silverstein right now, and um, it's tour of rules, but uh, there's a lot of shows where, you know, a lot of people don't know who we are. So, you know, the favorite songs thing has sort of shifted a little bit, but uh, but I'd say ultimately, um, it, it's, it's one of our newer songs, so it's hard to really kind of give it that time approval, uh, you know, longevity approval, but as of right now, I think The City um, from, from Long Live, it's one of my favorite songs um, to perform, but it, but it definitely helps when kids know who we are and they know the song, because at the end there, it's, it's supposed to be pretty big, and um, if no one's singing along, it's... You know, it's only so big. So, um, but yeah, that, that's ultimately that's probably. I don't think we have that problem tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what's the inspiration and story behind your band name, Cherry? Um, the Cherry actually comes from 
uh, one of the books of the Bible that actually talks about uh, a chariot of fire coming down and picking up uh, his dude Elijah so that um, straight up to heaven. And I, I didn't really, um, I didn't like go to church or anything like when I was a kid, but somehow I remember that story. It always just kind of stayed in my head. And uh, I, I, even now when I think about it, I think that's really, it's a wild story, you know, uh, to, to just have someone not even die and just get picked up right. straight to heaven. I, I thought it was really cool. Um, so it just kind of was uh, something I've always kept in my head, and when it came time to start this band, it was something that we, uh, it was really easy to go ahead and have a cherry, you know. Now, now your album, The Fiancé, gained a lot of popularity with the underground scene. Now, how did that make you guys feel to get, you know, such that popular vibe right off the start? Um, I, you know, I don't know, I, I guess... I mean, it's always good as an artist to have people like the art that you're doing. You know, it's very humbling. Uh, but I don't get, I don't, it's nothing, we don't really notice. I mean, we're just on tour all the time, you know, and, and we support like a million, like a million bands. We, we try, we don't headline very much. So I guess we kind of like, the more the merrier, obviously it feels good. But I mean, we don't really notice like, I don't know, you know, you don't, you don't, it's not like we're a band that, we're an underground band, you know what I mean? We're like punk rock bands that just kind of like, we play our shows, and some shows are like right big and they feel really good, and then some shows aren't, you know? City to city is different, you know, you never know. And so so I guess, it, you know, obviously the, the short answer would be it feels great, you know, it feels great if anybody likes your art or what you do. Um, but, I mean, you know, we'll play a show, like, we'll play sold out shows on this tour with Silverstein, and then, you know, we'll do a show like by ourselves for hundred kids, you know, and that rules also. You know, I mean, they're, the more intimate they are, they're awesome. The bigger they are, they're awesome. It's really just how you view it, you know, if the glass is half full or empty, you know, and for us, it's always full, so it's just, it's really easy to kind of, like, make that work, you know. And um, how hard has, I noticed you guys went through quite a few band members throughout the years. How hard, how, how hard was that for you guys? Um, you know, when, when friends move along or, you know, get married or whatever the case may be and they peace out, you know, it's, it's always a, a, a challenge to, to, to keep things rolling, to keep things going, but really it's always been a very, very pleasant thing. It's, it's always been a very, it's always kind of fell on our laps. We've never, like, we've never, like, had auditions or anything. It's always been friends of ours or, you know, people that have been with us forever anyway, so, like, so it's always been a very, like, I think it should have been a lot harder than it was, but, it, but it's always been like-minded people that, you know, have been friends of ours anyway, and it just made sense or whatever, but uh, I think the chariot's kind of an entity, it's like a machine that keeps moving forward, even if we're, you know, not ready for it, you know, it's kind of its own thing that's kind of pushing forward somehow, and we're just along for the ride, really, so. <laughs> Now your album, Wars and Winners, uh, is there a message behind that album, and is there a story behind that video, uh, Packer? Um, uh, Wars is actually kind of a, kind of a darker record. We didn't really go and, we didn't really plan for that to be the case, uh, but that was like, it was within the same year that my father had passed away, so a lot of lyrics were sort of around those struggles and those sort of questions and such, and, uh, but the title, Wars and Wars, Wars um, that's actually also a biblical reference, but we mean it something different, you know, biblically speaking, it's not about the end times, and, and you'll know they're near, but we're really just referring to the wars and, and that go on inside our heads, you know, every everybody's, you know, uh, big life decisions, you know, life and death, like my father passing away, and little mundane decisions, what am I going to do today, you know, not die of boredom today, you know, little things like that, so each song sort of has its kind of um, message, if you will, but it's all different, you know, it's all, like, um, very just, they're very, it's a very personal record, um, I, again, wasn't intentional, it's just kind of the way I go back and read the record, read the, it's a very, very uh, obvious time stamp of my life and what I was going through, and, and, uh, and I, I love it, but I, but I feel like it was sort of, um, we, we didn't mean for this to happen, but it was sort of the tunnel. And, and the newest record we have, Long Live, is almost the light at the end of that tunnel. Because um, I felt like maybe I was kind of in a dark, darker area um, when we were doing wars. Um, and, and then, you know, with Long Live, I think the, the, the natural byproduct of doing such a deep-rooted record 
wants to kind of be a little bit more whimsical and a little bit lighter, you know, um, again, nothing intentional, it's just very impulsive, but I think with one being one way, you, you naturally are going to go the other way with, with and that's the way Long Live sort of panned out. It, it panned out very whimsical and very impulsive, you know, and I, and I feel like it's a lot more of a light at the end of the tunnel sort of record. You're actually just answering my next question about Long Live. Sweet. <laughs> there you go. Now, uh, you guys have been labeled as, like, Christian metal, metalcore, mathcore, which I don't know what the heck that is, and many, and many other genres. Uh, what I'm type of music math. do you guys consider yourself? Um, I don't know. We get that question a lot. You know what? Who knows, man? You know, as an artist, like, you know, that's the thing you try to avoid is boundaries and boxes. And, you know, as soon as you put one label, you want to do something different, you know. So, I don't know, you know. I know we usually just, uh, off the cuff, we just usually refer to it as a punk rock because it's like our lifestyle is very, you know, we sleep in the van, we, we stay at people's houses, you know, we drive ourselves, we load our stuff in. You know, I mean, it's very just the punk rock lifestyle. We, 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 uh, we have to make, like, ten bucks last us for, you know, a month or whatever, you know. So, it's like... So, you know, we just call it that because it's, you know, I think I feel like the, the punk rock music that, that, that exists and existed is prides themselves on trying to do different than a label would cause, you know, but I know the media likes to put, uh, you know, math or whatever, I don't, I'm not very good at math, so I, I don't know, I, I think the difference there, we do have, you know, we, our, our stuff changes a lot. Yeah, see, Norma Gina's label is math core too, I asked them that same question, really, they didn't know what it was. Exactly, I think the difference there is, uh, people call that, call us that because we have a lot of changes, but... But if there was a genre for like ADD kids that like got bored really quickly, that would be our genre. But I think mathcore, I don't know what it means, but I think what they're doing is they're preemptively going, okay, what's crazy, what's complicated, what's, you know, how are we going to make this as tricky as possible? They set forth and go, go with it. With us, we write a song and then we're like, well, we did that riff. We're bored. Let's change it. Boom. Oh, well, now we're bored with that. Let's change it. Boom. So I think ours is very a lot more impulsive, and we're all, we're basically winging it in every sense of the word. But we're all like ADD, and, like get bored quick. So we just it, it's a byproduct of that. You know? So whatever that genre is, help yourself. <laughs> all right. And last but not least, uh, what does the future hold for the Chariot? You got any other albums coming out, tours, side projects? What did your fans expect? Well, we're doing a. Uh, we're putting out a 7 inch here soon. It's got an, a song that wasn't released on the album. Um, we're really stoked on it because we've never done that before. We've never, we, we put all our efforts in, into the album. You know, if a song, if we feel like a song's not going to make it, we just let it go and focus on the other songs. But this one we really wanted to put on the record, but it just never found a home. Um, if you put it in track two, it wouldn't work because of this. If you did it in track four, it wouldn't work. So it just never found a place, you know. So anyway, the label talked about doing a, a seven inch, and we were like, perfect, that's where it belongs, you know. So we're really excited about that. And as far as touring, we're doing, uh, we're hitting um, Australia, we're hitting New Zealand, um, uh, Japan, and China this year, which we're really excited about. Um, we've never hit those areas, so. It's uh, another little branch of our, you know, we love to travel, we love to, you know, play and meet new people, so that's, uh, we're very cultured, you know, so we really like and enjoy that sort of stuff, so, um, so that's a new episode that we're about to hit, you know, coming up. Awesome. Definitely thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see your intense show. We've actually <laughs> awesome. never got to see you live. Right, right on. Live, so I'm definitely excited. I saw the uh, video on YouTube for Teach. Right on. That's, that's a, a pretty fun intense. one. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, thank you so much.